Hello guys, so today we are back with uh, last reviews, last four reviews. Today we have a banger, but we also today, I am not promising 10 minutes because we are going also through patch notes, because we also have patch notes for tomorrow. So let's go and we have started with a complete banger. So Onager, Machine Siege Engine whenever you use an order ability damage around the uh, enemy unit by one. So if you know, we have a sergeant or whatever his name is, that boost by one for every order card you play or something like this and it's horrible the thing is this card is 20 times better for several reasons first it's a machine and siege engine which synergizes with uh, cards that use a lot of orders which is siege engines and it can be played in siege obviously uh, then we have a very big change that is instead of boosting it's damaging and most of the time damaging is better than boosting and the last thing is it's like whenever you use an ordinary ability not whenever you play a card with ordinary ability so you can trigger it so so many times it's an actually a machine gun so if you imagine you have for example card like priestess that you can use on uh, tridam infantry to pew pew Imagine that you can do it like twice now because you use an order and it's already proking. So it's like a, uh, it's even better combo because you can do it twice. Also, this synergizes with things like a leader ability. Leader ability uh, also is an order ability, so you will get a ping. Then you have all of the sieges or arbalists that can uh, gather a lot of uh, orders and then you can pew pew pew. It's basically a trollololo, but damages, which most of the time is better because you can get rid of engines and you can get rid of uh, everything that your opponent plays this card looks small but it's absolutely incredible and it's uh, it's a very scary card that you really want to remove because it can generate so 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 much value uh, they could even make it at least damage a highest power enemy unit or something like this so you can like, avoid it a little bit and it can't kill anything but this is, ooh, this will be scary. R look out for an siege deck. Then we have another cool, ca cool card from Witcher 2, Bernard Loredo. Order dual a random enemy unit. So this is basically Seltkirk, but for two less provision, which is pretty good because it, if you AA it, it will go to seven. The thing is, it's dueling a random enemy unit. So there is a problem that you cannot choose. However, if you go second, uh, and you play it on your first turn, it's pretty good because basically it's like a uh, Manticore. It's basically the same as Manticore that with the leader ability, Inspire Zeal in this case, you can pretty much kill whatever your opponent plays first in a round. Uh, however, it's a little bit mm, better in Manticore in the sense that it can later kill something good even if your opponent has tokens but of course it's rng dependent also this can uh, which is nice kill uh, immune units and it can kill like something big if you give it a shield or something but of course it's very meta dependent uh, because you if you play a lot against a, a lot of tokens this can be easily like five or seven and do nothing pretty much uh, but it's a nice card to have i'm only my only pro worry is that uh, nr often has cards that are decent or like even good but they never see play because they are so conditional or so dependent on the meta let's say like k Ramets, i think it's uh, it's the in theory it provides a lot of boost but it's so conditional that you don't play and same with Seltkirk, like Seltkirk depends on the meta. If the meta is Inspired Zeal, well, Seltkirk is in every deck. But if it's not, then Seltkirk is completely gone, pretty much. So this is kind of the same problem. Uh, but it's a soldier which synergizes with a lot of decks, so mm, we might see it. If you want, you want to see the better explanation of uh, Bernard Loredo uh, with a lot of details, go check Mercer's thread or his uh, website. Uh, or an article when he described this card very very well and uh, looked at a lot of uh, ideas behind this card. Interesting card. Then we have Flotsam. Resilience create a bronze northern realms unit with an order ability. Order refresh an allied bronze unit's order then give it zero. 
So I'm very conflicted about this card because uh, on some uh, some problem there are. On one hand, it's not that good. On the other hand, it can be scary because in a deck that plays a lot of orders and a lot a lot of orders, um, this card can give you a lot of value. For example, it's in theory extremely good with uh, River Hunters. The thing about this is that the River Hunters already kind of have an easy way to uh, f f uh, like put a lot of cards in the melee row. Like they already uh, swarm the melee row quite quickly and kind of don't need another way to proc them. But on the other side, on the other hand, you can use this in round one and then just keep the order for to quick to do it quicker in round two. So maybe some will actually try it with Riven Hunters and then it's gonna be annoying because then if you lose round one, then you are doomed. So you will have to win round one uh, with whatever means. So that's a little bit interesting of a dynamic. The, it is also scary with the card that is called Alumni that I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely hate. This is close to my mill range. When Alumni was uh, uh, an meta deck, I almost didn't play, I almost like quit playing game because I hate it so much. I really, really despise this archetype. I have no even clue why. I really, really don't like it. And this card really synergizes with uh, uh, Alumni because you can also put Vima Vendra, which is also a mage, which sometimes matters. Uh, that can refresh it and basically you get three more uh, ways to trigger Alumni. The problem is that sometimes you will want to have more alumni, not more of the refresh of al alumni, which might be problematic, but it is pretty good in that deck. So the problem of this deck, of this card though, is that create a Bronze Northern Realm unit with an order has a chance to give you, you pick out of three, but there are a lot of bad units that you can get. I mean, there are like 50-50 for good and bad unit because there are uh, around 40 uh, Bronze units with order and some of them like i don't know uh like the siege master it's like trash when you get it maybe in some niche scenario when you play a siege deck you can choose it but it's a kind of bad card there are a lot of cards that lie like four 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 or four four five four four uh, that you can get but there is also of course alumni kerak frigate uh, and River Hunter that you can get and all of them are pretty pretty juicy so this is kind of an RNG and you kind of because this is like you are playing targeted uh, this alchemy stone that you you know the, that uh, that every faction has and you know Nenar doesn't use it of course the pool of cards is smaller so you have you are more likely to, to pick something but that card was worth five uh provision this is nine so you are very paying a lot to have a refresh but in some decks this refresh will be pretty huge so this card will probably see like 100 percent it will see play in like a, a golden necker deck if you play with with an r uh and it i think it might see play in alumni but out I think Siege, for example, deck that can use it because there are a lot of Siege engines uh, hidden in the order ability. I think it will not use this card because it's not that broken in Siege. But you will, of course, River Hunters and Alumni will might experiment with it, and you might hi hate this card soon. We will see. <coughs> and for the last cards, we have an extremely interesting card that can be extremely powerful. King Demavent, Human Aristocrat, banish three cards from your deck. Play a base copy of one of them, then remove it from the list. Cooldown 2. So that card can... It's such an interesting poker mechanic with your opponent. So you can play this in a few ways. First of all, you can play it in round one. Or like in round... Yeah, round one. And you banish like three bronzes that are kind of medicor. Or they're like, uh, you know, depending on like tech choices that you know that you want to use or some like average card that you don't really want to play. 
and you banish them, so you fin by three, which is in NR. Oh, well, now now maybe it's not that bad in NR, but uh, NR used to struggle with consistency if they didn't play pincer maneuver, and so you can get rid of three bad cards from your deck, which makes your future rounds uh, good. But then if you play in order, you still get value from this card. So for example, if you uh, even delete something like a squirrel, then you, well, you can play play it anyway, and you can get like four power. So you are then playing 11 for 13 and thinning of three, which is pretty decent. But also you can play like, uh, I don't know, banish river hunter from your deck and then uh, get like an engine on the board which is also pretty good so and also it's he's outside of uh, six power removal range so it can uh, be a little scary however you can also play it in for example round three when you miss on all, some of your goals so well as i said your consistency is uh, bad you low rolled all of the your draw and three of your golds or like two of your golds are still in the deck in round three well then you use king dem event and you get all of them and in that situation king dem event can play for like 30 40 50 points because you get all of these goals that you missed uh, of course you can this is like two edge cases on the other spectrum but you can make like a combine of like maybe i will take one gold that i want to really play in round two and two bronzes that I just don't care about, and then you play this. So it will make an interesting poker game with your opponent that you don't know, they don't know what you got, you don't know if they really have to re remove them event or it's just a thinning tool. So it's a very interesting dynamic, but it can, the card can be very, very scary if you can get like all of your goals in round three just through one card. It's like on a Roma C times three pretty much, but on the cooldown, uh, in theory, of course, but it's a third improvision card, so it makes sense. Uh, very interesting card, can be very scary, uh, and I actually don't know what deck it will will use it, but I do believe it will be very interesting card in tournaments when you know your opponent's deck. If it's a open deck list tournament, and you can you know when you can slam it to make it safe. It's gonna be pretty interesting because you know, like you know your opponent has like five removal and like or karate heat wave and they just used it okay i slam them event and i go for full value maybe they have like two rebukes and that's it so you can play it and then after two turns like boost it outside of the range something like this very interesting card and i really look forward to see what opponent will play how opponent will play it in tournaments and i do believe we will see it in some tournaments uh, depending of course on the meta because if it's a super heavy control meta then probably not mm, because like lock really screws this card we will see interesting can be very scary and now we will go to patch notes because we have some bonus patch notes apart from what we've seen in the video so i will just try to go through it quickly mm. Of chaos, of course. Spring Equinox we saw it's a nice and welcome change. It won't kill the deck, but it will definitely tune in down. Uh, then we have a Goliath. That's a change that we haven't seen. Bonus to power. That is nice, be nice because Ogroids is uh, are getting uh, like a support. So now you get 12 for seven, which is pretty good, and it will trigger might uh, easily because in ten, you know, your opponent could damage it by one, and uh, might will be gone. Uh, here is 12, so you probably your opponent have to use the free damage, mm, which is more awkward to see. Uh, and also it's like 12 for 7 is pretty good. Mm, plus you probably want to play as many giants as uh, you want. Then we have a Yotun, power change from 3 to 1, provision cost change from 6 to 8, ability change deploy boost self by the total pace power of ice giants in your starting deck so that's interesting because ice giants were horrible they're like seven for five do nothing uh and there was a problem that if you thought about ogroid deck and you looked what ogroids there are in the deck in the game at the moment you saw like ice giants and you were like really i need to play this shit but now you have a purpose to play those cards because uh if yotun will be in the game they will yotun will be 15 points 
So then you made another card that can that is Ogroid and can trigger Might, uh, which is pretty good. And you have a reason to play Ice Giants in your deck, which means you further boost some of the um, uh, Ogroids. Cyclops power change from 4 to 5. Cyclops, yeah, another Ogroid, but I don't know if you're gonna play it, especially with his kind of anti-synergy with... Uh, Golems, I doubt. And then we have an Ice Troll, power change from 4 to 5, armor change to 0 to 2, and then end of turn boost self by 1. We've seen that. This will probably, you will play. Depends on the meta and depends if you need an engine. Skellige. Krahan Krait now also has a warrior tag that's pretty cool because, uh, oops, because we will uh, have a chance to play him in a warrior deck. That's it. That's not change much, but that's cool. Wild Boar of the Sea power change from 4 to 6, that's reasonable because uh, that was a card that was kind of bad recently. But now at least if your opponent doesn't have that many units, you have a little bit more power on the board. Armor Smith, we've seen this change on the stream and this is a very scary one. This might be the best card of the expansion, that's what worries me. Unplayed Graceful now also has a veteran, that's nice because this means that Apart from when you use the card that increased the veteran, but I forgot the name. Uh, it's gonna be 12 in round 3, and if I remember correctly, it's damage is self by 6, right? It doesn't damage is 2 or 4, it just damages by 6. So now, you won't be that sad in round 3 when you play them, because they also will be harder to remove. So when they, it will, on deploy, they will be 6, so that's not bad. And cards like Blaze of Glory will be a tiny bit better. Nice. Highland Warlord added VFX to the deploy. Cool. Queen Myth now also has an Aristocrat. Ability change to deploy reduce the timer by one for each adjacent unit with inspired ability. Ooh, that's very boost an all allied unit by one and reset the timer. This is interesting because I just played Necker Myth and Myth was actually pretty good. Now it will be even better if you play Inspired cards because she can trigger every turn. Like, I managed to trigger sometimes twice her and that was incredible. But now if they, uh, if she can trigger every time, uh, this is kind of scary. Because you can make, the, make her trigger instantly. If you play by instantly, I mean that you, the moment you play it, but in the end of that turn, she will uh, pop and you can kind of prepare for it, which is pretty good. Uh, it's kind of scary. All other, all the other kings and queens, including Tildiko, that's funny. I also have an aristocrat tag. That's probably for drafted consistency. Mm. But this kind of boosts assimilate a little bit, as always. Uh, Skeletal, we know. I love this ability of Spring. Every Hattori power change from 2 to 6. Uh, we've seen that card whenever you play an Athi Booster, uh, boost the lowest power. Yeah, I've seen. You're red! Now power change from 4 to 6, always happy to see a little bit of boost. Yorvet Gambit added new part of ability, if you have 6 or more traps in your starting deck, play 2 of your choice instead. So that's nice because you can exactly set up what you need in that situation, uh, but I'm not sure if you play Yorvet Gambit anyway, now you get this new card that draws you an elf and trap, and that's probably better than Yorvet Gambit, and Gambit is now with the spring change it's kind of awkward because you always have to play it between a unit as well and it's very expensive i don't know arfine heavy cavalry provision cost change from five to four cool that card was not seen play if i remember which card it is so maybe this will boost uh, boost it but we remember remember we actually had some cool additions to soldiers in this uh, expansion so maybe it will boost it uh, and that's it. We have the back for tactical adventure, ad, uh, advantage. Now it will. Um, uh, now it will be gone. So that's cool. So that's it for the changes. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm gonna stream later today because this video is coming on Tuesday, and we're gonna build some new decks. So make sure to check the channel. I'm gonna drop some cool decks soon. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.